everybody. Um, I'm, a, I'm a little, I, I admit, I'm a little more nervous than I thought I would be. Um, I thought there would be like 12 people in the audience that had to stay late for work. <laughs> Not every company I might have to interview with someday. <laughs> And then on top of that, I have to go eight out of nine, which is like a baseball game. It's like in the seventh inning. You're like, hey, let's all sing, take me out to the ball game. And then the eighth guy, you're like, hey, let's try and beat traffic. <laughs> so I am the beat traffic act. <laughs> um, I, uh, I was gonna try and do something that was um, that was really kind of indicative of the current state of our industry here. So I was gonna write my act and then cut it down to eight seconds <laughs> and then just stand up here and let everybody make negative comments about me for the next five minutes. But that just got too inside, you know? Like, if I got inside, I don't wanna do that. I asked if I could swear, I asked if I could swear when I, when I signed up to do this. And they said, well, you know, you can swear, but just think about it, like your, your boss might be in the audience, your future boss, and I was like, future boss? Oh, tell me more about the future boss. Who is the future boss? What do they know? Do they know how I'm gonna be fired someday at my current job? Because I would love to be able to plan that exit, you know? Like, hey, hey, fuck you, I'm going to work for Future Boss. She is amazing. That was pandering to the... I gotta tell y'all, and just in transparency, I, I did, uh, I actually uh, have done stand-up before. Uh, if you're a stand-up comic fan, I, uh, I actually opened for the late, great Mitch Hedberg years ago. And uh, the reason I say that is because I love uh, undeserved credibility. <laughs> I love name-dropping. I, I, I think there's nothing better. It's, it's served me really well. It, it's made me the man I am today. Undeserved credibility. But, you know, in advertising, that can be tough. Because in advertising, you're supposed to act like you're kind of unimpressed with celebrity. And sometimes you're even supposed to have a bad story about them so that it shows the intimacy that you have with them, you know? Um, so, for example, I shot a commercial with the Atlanta Braves several years over the, over the course of several years, I shot a lot of spots with the Atlanta Braves. So when they come up, I'd be like, yeah, I actually, I actually shot a bunch of spots with Chipper Jones. Oh my God, he's like my favorite Brave, he's my favorite all-time Brave. He's an ass, okay? <laughs> Chipper Jones is an ass. What, why? He's like the face of the team. Oh, well, you should know this then. The Atlanta Braves flew me down first class to Orlando. They put me up in a Walt Disney Resort hotel for five days and four nights. I had to shoot commercials between eight and 10 in the morning before it got too hot. And then I had the rest of the day to go to whatever theme park I wanted to go to, Animal Kingdom. And then one morning, I'm standing at Craft Services. I'm eating yogurt and fresh squeezed Florida orange juice and croissants. And someone comes up and says, hey, Chipper's running a little late. He's eating breakfast with his agent. And I'm like, oh, that's great, Chipper Jones. Sorry that this team pays you $10 million a year and you can't be on time for the commercial, you stupid guy with a stupid chin beard and a stupid soul patch, you ass patch. Chipper Jones, I'll say it to your face, you're an ass patch. Another, another example, okay? How about this one? Ed Helms. Hey, guess what? I did a voiceover session with Ed Helms. Oh my God, he's like my favorite character on The Office. He's an ass. That guy's an ass. What? He seems so nice on the show. Oh, well you should know this. Just in case you run into him. I was in a studio in Atlanta. And he was in a tiny sound booth in Los Angeles. 
and uh, he's reading the script that he's never seen before about a honey-baked ham. And when he's finished with the script, he says to me, is that what you were looking for? And I said, well, could it be a little more Ed Helmsy? And he said, I don't know what that means. And I'm like, oh, you don't know what that means? That ass patch? And he's like, I don't know what ass patch means. And I'm like, it's a baseball thing, Ed Helms. Sorry. I will say this is about Honey Baked Ham, and I know we're not supposed to criticize any of our clients, but Honey Baked Ham actually sent me into one of the great existential crises of my life. Um, I was, um, I was uh, standing at a photo shoot around a table, and there were like six or seven of us, and we're all standing there around this ham. And someone looks at me, and they're like, because I'm the creative director, do you think it's ready to shoot? <laughs> and I know that it's my job to say, well, yes, you know it. It looks pink enough. It looks veiny enough. It's actually really disgusting to look at. So yes, I think it is ready to shoot. This, but in my head, I was like, I don't fucking know. I have no fucking idea if this honey baked ham is ready to shoot. It looks delicious. It looks like it's ready to eat. It looks like someone took a blowtorch and melted 10 pounds of sugar to encrust the ham. But other than that, I have no fucking idea. I don't even know why I'm here. I don't know what I'm doing. Is this real? Have I even told a joke yet tonight? I don't know. I don't fucking know. And they said you had five minutes, and I've been up here for 45 minutes. And I'm the act that you're supposed to decide to drive home by. I am gonna finish with one joke though. This is the only joke I've ever actually written. And I did it for this. And it's just to bring closure. Uh, I told someone that I had to put my dog to sleep this morning. And then I told him I was a hypnotist. Oh man, I had y'all all night. They tell that joke. Y'all are fucking ass patches. Thank you. Have a good night. Mike Seth, you like Mike Seth? Yeah.